there was this article that came out about a few days ago about Joe Biden. Uh, it was published in the Washington Post. And I thought that article was so incredibly telling, just so incredibly telling about just the mindset of him and his campaign. Um, and so this article, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already heard about it. It was talking about how his strategy for this 2020 campaign so far has basically been to not campaign. So Joe Biden goes out of his way to avoid public appearances. He goes out of his way to uh, avoid rallies and events and just avoid running his mouth as much as possible. And I just, I think that's golden. It's so golden because it, it's, it showcases that it's not just progressives. It's not just the politically woke. It's, it's the corporate Democrats themselves, the establishment. They're, they're, they're woke to the fact that they have lost their touch. Joe Biden knows right now that he's lost his touch. He knows that the clock's ticking. Time bomb's about to go off. He's screwed. He knows that. Otherwise, he'd be out and he'd be out doing normal campaign things, holding rallies, speaking to people, kissing babies, greeting people, giving people handshakes, things of that nature. But instead, he is scared of the smoke. He don't want the smoke. I think that's golden. And that gave me the idea to do a video just kind of detailing what is so um, egregious about this man's record. And I found a list of three things, three incredibly important things that when you really hold them up in the light of political history shows that he is not a true progressive. So the first major thing, was, I'm sure many of you have heard about this, the 1994 crime bill. This was a piece of legislation pushed through Congress, helped by the likes of Joe Biden, and even voted on by Bernie Sanders as well. Bernie Sanders supported this group, this legislation. It was signed by Bill Clinton. This was a huge piece of legislation. It had the Violence Against Women Act. It had uh, an assault weapons ban. But it also had uh, tough on crime legislation that was meant to decrease crime levels in the United States. Now, it's important to note at this time that in 1994, in the, in the early 90s, violent crime, murder rates were all at an all-time high around this point of history in America. It, it, crime was a huge problem. Don't get me wrong. But what was also becoming an incredible epidemic in this country was mass incarceration, which might play into why crime was such an incredible problem. Because what you were dealing with is millions upon millions of, of those in the minority communities being uh, prosecuted, being persecuted, and being targeted and discriminated by law enforcement officials. This had been going on through the 70s and the 80s, pushed through by Nixon and uh, Carter, and then Reagan especially, just helped reinforce this epidemic of mass incarceration. But the, this 94 crime bill did so much to not only uh, continue this epidemic, but in strengthen this epidemic to the point where from 1994 to 2009, Incarceration rates doubled in this country. What was also in this bill was, again, um, mandatory three-strike laws. This became a federal piece of legislation. Three strikes. So, right, so you get one felony, two felony, three felonies, you now have a mandatory life sentence that you have to serve. It also had a, a piece of legislation. Uh, it was the TIS, which basically gave states a reason, gave, uh, basically was begging states to put in laws which made criminals serve out the vast majority of their sentences rather than be let out for good behavior, just overpopulation and things of that nature. So you were looking at a piece of legislation that uh, heavily enforced mass incarceration across the country. And the results showed that. Joe Biden was an integral part of that. He was the person on the floor of Congress talking about, yes, be tough on crime. Our streets are struggling. We need to be tough on crime. Our families are imploding. We have to we have to be moral. We have to be tough on crime. Then you have Bernie Sanders in opposition, right? Talking about, I hate parts of this bill. It is going to increase and strengthen this epidemic of mass incarceration. We I hate that part of the bill, but I'm at an impasse because you now have forced me to support this bill to do the assault weapons ban and the Violence Against Women Act, which would have um, kind of counteracted the, the domestic violence epidemic across our country as well. So that is an incredible mark against Joe Biden's progressive record that he wants to uh, flaunt in these speeches whenever he comes out of his shell 
and talks about how I'm a true progressive. Real funny. Then, the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War. These are both wars which cost us trillions upon trillions of dollars. Looking at a war that killed hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians. Looking at a war which left a power vacuum in the Middle East, which terrorist groups were left to fill. This is an incredibly disastrous piece of foreign policy. Something that Joe Biden, again, was on the floor of Congress advocating for, helping to push through. But Bernie Sanders, true progressives, uh, other true progressives at that time, stood against wars like these. Again, another major mark against this progressive record, showing again that he is a true corporate Democrat. And then one last thing was NAFTA, uh, CAFTA, and PNTR with China, these disastrous trade deals. NAFTA alone left an estimated 400,000 jobs lost across the country, looking at the destruction of manufacturing across the country. Now, that's not to say that since we're moving to automation, of course, those jobs wouldn't have been lost anyway. But according to spe specific studies done by groups who have looked at how NAFTA, uh, NAFTA itself, in correlation with, let's say, automation and things of that nature, NAFTA itself was responsible for the loss of 400,000 jobs in America alone. That is the impact of Joe Biden. So you're talking about trillions of dollars wasted in disastrous wars. You're talking about mass incarceration. You're talking about the destruction of minority communities. You're talking about 400,000 manufacturing jobs. And you're saying that this guy, number one, is going to be more elected with Bernie Sanders, being able to go to states like uh, Michigan, states like Ohio, states like Wisconsin, and say, I'm the candidate who can beat Trump. I'm going to protect your jobs when I'm the one who was held uh, in part responsible for you losing your job in the first place. That's the candidate who's going to beat Trump. That's real funny. That's real funny. That is why Joe Biden has lost his touch. Due to a record with such incredible marks against a progressive ideology. That is why. That is why he now realizes time is ticking. My window is rapidly closing. I am screwed. I can't talk. I can't be out in public. I can't campaign. Because anytime I open my mouth... People realize I am full of crap. People realize I'm not a true progressive. People realize I am not for, um, for the bolstering of an, a true American middle class. I'm not for Medicare for all. I'm not for tuition-free public college and universities. I'm not for the long list of issues which would go a long way to rebuild this American economy. We all have a piece of the success and not just the few. People realize that every time he opens his mouth because of a long record. Of things like this. Iraq war, NAFTA, and of course the 94 crime bill. This is what Joe Biden stands for. So it's incredibly telling that now we're in 2020 and this guy says, you know what? White flag. White flag. I realize it. I've lost my touch. Let me tell you something, man. Joe Biden's a political dinosaur. There is a meteor streaking across the horizon, Bernie's face imprinted on it. And he's looking up. <gasps> and he's hoping, he's praying to God that that meteor doesn't strike him down. But let me tell you something. The progressive revolution is coming, whether he likes it or not. Yeah, Joe Biden's lost his touch. And I'm grateful because the progressive revolution's coming. Mm -hmm.